this is one side of the battery compartment which weighs, I think it's uh, this one, 716 grams with the tape on and everything. I put that tape on purely because there's holes underneath and I don't want them getting clogged up with resin or anything else like that. Anyway, I'm getting ready to um, cover it. I'm just going to skin it with carbon fibre. Now I'm going to be using uh, 3K, yeah, 3K carbon fibre. The K rating on carbon fibre is how many strands there are actually to a a strand strip thing. You know, on the weave, 3,000 strands. You can actually get, I've got some 12K carbon fibre, but I'm not using it because it's cost too much. And I've never done this before, so I don't know what I'm doing. Obviously, the more strands that you've got, the stronger it's actually going to be. Um, and as the old saying goes, a uh, cord of three strands is not easily broken, I think it was. So the more strands you've got, the stronger it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be 2 to 12. The 12 rating is how many... Where the weft actually goes over the intersecting bloody parts or anything, the two is over two and under two and over two, that sort of thing. Now there's going to be a few people who are going to say, why don't you use Kevlar? Why don't you use just normal fiberglass? Well, the reason being is fiberglass, the cheap shit you get in the UK isn't very good. It's normally glass. The S glass is expensive and it's a hell of a lot stronger and yes it is stronger than carbon fibre in certain circumstances, certain situations. This is going to be for um, cosmetic mainly. Um, now carbon fibre, you've got stiffness and strength. Those two things are not related, they are strength from what I remember, I'm trying to get this right now, I've got no bloody cue. Strength is the ability of a material to resist a force. And stiffness is the ability to resist deflection or deformation. So it's completely two different things. You can actually have a very stiff material which isn't strong and a very strong material which isn't stiff. Carbon fibre has the highest stiffness of all the materials, or in, in relation anyway. It's actually good at resisting force, so that's that's why I'm using this. Now it, with with carbon fibre, with relation to the tensile strength, fiberglass is actually stronger than carbon fibre, and Kevlar is stronger than, uh, than than fiberglass. But Kevlar is not very good with impact resistance. It fractures the the, the wave actually fractures. There's too much I'm going to go into. Number one, it was cost related, and number two, it's just I love the oh, look, look of it. <laughs> it's just if we say it, I'm doing it with carbon fibre purely because of cosmetics. Leave it at that. <laughs> Yes, I could have done Kevlar, but Kevlar's bad in tensile strength, but it's good in other places. Carbon fibre is, is stronger than steel in certain circumstances for its given weight. But anyway, so I've got carbon fibre now. I've cleared that one up. There's going to be a bloody comments. Oh, God, I'm not an expert on this, so please don't. I'm going to be covering this with carbon fibre. Now, the first thing I've got to, got to do is I've got to get some uh, spray adhesive and spray it all over, and then I'm going to get the carbon fibre, and I'm going to lay it on top, and then make sure it's in all the nice little, little nooks and crannies, and the weave is actually the right way. I think I'm going for a diagonal weave, but I can't remember where the, how the actual thing's cut on the roll. It might be a straight weave rather than diagonal which will add to the strength that way and also the bending of that way but it'll be bad that way that way diagonal anyway don't know yet so i've got to put spray adhesive on the top and then i'm going to put the carbon fiber on and then i've got to put the wetting layer on which is just literally to wet the carbon fiber then it's got to be left to go tacky, then I can put another layer on, then I can put another layer on. This is a very, very drawn out, long process. It's not a five minute job. And I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I want a mirror finish. 
but I don't know if it's going to be achievable. So here we go. I've laid that stuff on, um, that one. What I've used is that, simply that. What I did was you get a cloth, spray it onto the cloth, and then wipe it over the over the over the part because it doesn't always spray in a spray. It's a jet anyway. That's done. The only thing I've noticed is the weave isn't perfect that way. Although you probably can't even see it on this. It's okay. I've got it all in line there, and I was more concerned about getting the li those lines right, and I've. I didn't get that right perfectly, but you can't really see it. So, I've now got my epoxy, which is two to one. Two parts epoxy, one part hardener. So I'm going to mix it up and apply it. I'm a man of many talents, and cocking up is one of them. <laughs> I admit when I get it wrong, and I got, I got this one wrong. What happened was... When I put it all on, I, put, I laid all the carbon fibre on, I put the adhesive on, laid the carbon fibre on, started wetting it, but I forgot to lay all the edges round underneath um, because I'd, I'd got half covered it or painted it, you know, I, I put the resin on and everything and that's still wet. And now it's all over my fingers, bloody hell. Because I'd laid it all out and I'd started wetting it, um, there was no going back, there's no way I could have got it back off um, so what I had to do was do my best at actually doing the sides which I can't show you because this is just set in now um, I've done the, the wetting coat, this is the first thin coat which as you can see there's loads of high spots so I'm going to leave this for another three hours and then I'm going to do another coat on it and then I can start sanding it down um, I don't know how this one's going to turn out to be honest it don't look very good <laughs> it's going to have to do, I ain't doing it again the other side I've just put the wet coat on and it's going to be a lot better than this so my show side is going to be the left hand side not this side but anyway it's, it's coming together it don't look that bad I might be able to get away with it <laughs> I hope <laughs> this is the left hand this is the left hand side it's had the wetting coat on and you can see the difference it's a hell of a lot better than the other one and the other one's really pissing me off and I don't know whether to redo it but I'd have to reprint everything uh, anyway this one uh, is still tacky so I've got to leave it uh, a bit longer for it to go a bit more tacky so then I can put the first coat on. So, I warn you with this, you've got to be... Oh, they're not in line. Oh, they're not in line. Oh, it's it's not easy, I warn you. It's not easy to get... Not easy. It's easy to put it on, but it's not easy to get it right especially when you're doing corners and stuff the best thing to do with a corner is not do it on the corner believe it or not try and get it so as it's slightly off corner because otherwise you can't match it up and the best way I found out was and I can't show you with anything I'll show you with this look this stuff is so fine it's absolutely unbelievable when you when you're cutting it, you can't just cut it. What you have to do is lay masking tape like I have done in here. Lay masking tape before you actually cut it and then cut it down the middle of the masking tape purely because you'll end up with... I don't want to get that on there. Purely because what you'll end up is frayed edges like this. So, <laughs> I can't believe I'm working over this. Uh, when you get right, on the corner. So, if I have a corner... How can I get this the best way? So if I have a corner like that and no, I've laid it on the top and then I've got the corner piece the best way to do it is to butt it up like that and then chop the end off just chop it basically down the... oh, I can't explain 
I'm shit at explaining. <laughs> anyway, I've done that. The corners are done. They are pretty much bloody perfect on this one. The other one's a mess. Don't care. I do. It's just annoying. But I've got to leave this to go off just a bit more so as it doesn't leave any stickiness on my finger and then I can put the first coat on and then I've got to leave it 24 hours then I can start sanding it down uh, then I can put another coat on blah 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 it's all time well I can't move it because it's got to sit here now for 24 hours while the resin goes off it's had a wetting coat and it's also had a first coat which are only thin so what I've got to do now is leave it 24 hours, let the resin completely set so I can then sand it down a bit, key it up again for the next coat. It's probably going to take about five or six coats I think. So you're talking five or six days just to do one panel. But I'm actually doing them in my pairs now. So now I've got the, the, the stuff laid down which was the initial thing and then I had to... Uh, anyway I can do them in pairs. So it should only take a week, hopefully, <laughs> and then it's done. Uh, it's not perfect, but it looks all right. It's coming out fine. There's no bubbles, there's no marks, and there's no... <sighs> Please. Now I've got my table back until tomorrow. These are my torque arms, which I've had to painstakingly clean up they've been filed drilled dremeled you name it everything they weren't easy to get right there's the obviously there's the dropout these things actually fit into the frame part and then the bolt goes along uh, goes on the back here I'm going to drill a hole in here and have a pinch there's going to be a pinch bolt there I don't it's probably a bit too thick for a pinch bolt and this bit here goes along the swing arm which is going to be there's deliberately a gap so I can put some um, cushioning on there to take up the shock if there is any but the good thing about this is I'm not going to be I'm not going to I'm not going to have to bolt it it's just going to be free standing sort of thing because it's going to be clamped in there it ain't going to be able to move it ain't going to come out there is no way can it come out so what I've got to do is I've got to harden it with salt water um, I'm going to heat it up obviously until it's bloody glowing dunk it in salt water to do some case hardening and then I'm going to spray it uh, I think I'm going to do it in enamel rather than have it powder coated because it's a hell of a lot quicker and a lot easier so there's that um, so all I've got to do is wait for this resin to go off and then I can do the battery casings, give them another cover, another coat. That was it. I'm, I'm struggling talking today. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, as you get old, you figure out your... Oh, fuck.